In this video, we're going to talk about the piezoelectric effect. So this device can convert mechanical energy into electricity. You could find it from a piezoelectric buzzer, which makes a very loud sound when a DC voltage is applied to it. But for this particular device, if you compress it, it will generate an electric current. And let me show you a demonstration of that. As you saw in a previous demonstration, the piezoelectric device was connected to two LEDs, two light emitting diodes. These LEDs are parallel to each other, or rather, anti-parallel. The anode of one LED is attached to the cathode of another LED. And as you saw, both LEDs were lighting up. So what was happening is that when the piezoelectric device was compressed, current was flowing in one direction. current flowed from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal, and this is conventional current. So in this direction, the green LED turned on. Now, after compression, once you compress the piezoelectric device and once you release uh, the force applied to it, it'll return to its original state. It'll decompress back to the state in which it was. And when that happens, the polarity reverses. So current flows in the other direction, turning on the red LED. Now the voltage that's required to turn on the LED is around 2 volts. It's about 1.8 volts for a red LED but 2 volts for a green LED. So it gives you an idea of the voltage that you could generate with a piezoelectric device. The voltage can be as high as 5 or 6 volts. Now let's talk about how we can capture the electrical energy generated from these devices when we compress and decompress them. So first, let's begin with our piezoelectric device. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a diode. This diode allows current to flow in one direction, but blocks current from flowing in the other direction. And then we're going to have a capacitor. The capacitor can be used to store electrical energy. And then we could release that energy to an LED, a light emitting diode. And we're gonna add a resistor so that we can control the amount of current flowing in the LED. So I'm gonna call this RS, the current limiting resistor. And this is our green LED. And this is C1, the capacitor. Let's use a 10 microfarad capacitor that can handle a maximum voltage of 50 volts. So once we compress the spring, I mean not the spring, but once we compress the piezoelectric device, current will flow through D1 and it's going to charge up C1. Now when C1 is charged, we can close the switch S1 and so current can flow from the capacitor through the LED, turn it on, back to the negative terminal of the capacitor. So a capacitor is a device that you could use to store the charge generated by the piezoelectric device. And if you want to measure the voltage across the capacitor, connect it to a multimeter. Each time you press the piezoelectric buzzer or the piezoelectric device, the voltage across the capacitor is going to go up. Now the rate at which it goes up depends on the capacitance. If you use a capacitor that has a capacitance of 100 microfarads, it'll take longer to charge, so it's going to go up slower. But if you use a smaller, a capacitor with a small capacitance, let's say like one microfarad, the voltage will rise quickly because it can't hold as much of a charge as this one can. Now the next thing that you want to consider is the type of diode that you're using. Because a silicon diode has a voltage drop of 0.6 to 0.7 volts and that's an energy cost that you'll have to pay for. Now if you choose to use a germanium diode the voltage drop of most germanium diodes are about 0.3 volts 
So you use less energy with that type of diode. So that's another factor that you want to take into consideration. The second thing that we need to mention is that this particular circuit is basically half efficient because when you compress the piezoelectric device, the current will flow in one direction. But when, you, when it's decompressed or when it's returning to its original state, current wants to flow in the other direction, but it can't because it's blocked by D1. And so that energy is wasted. It's not being used. So we need to create a different circuit in which we can capture the energy flowing in both directions as opposed to just one direction. So in this circuit, we're going to use a bridge rectifier network, which can convert an AC signal where the electric current can flow in both directions. It's going to convert it into a DC signal where it flows in one direction. So during compression, electric current will flow from the piezoelectric device, and then it's going to flow through D1. D1 is the diode in forward bias mode, so that diode is going to be on. It can't flow through D4. That's in reverse bias mode, so that diode is going to be off. Flowing through D1, it will charge capacitor 1, and then it's going to flow back here through diode 3. So diode 3 is going to be on, and then it's going to flow back to the negative terminal of the piezoelectric device. So that's what's happening during the first part of the energy generation process when we co compress the, the piezoelectric device. So D1 and D3 will be on. If we use a germanium diode, the total voltage drop from the two diodes will be 0.3 times 2. So we'll be losing 0.6 volts from that. If we use two silicon diodes, it'll be 0.6 times 2. So we'll be losing 1.2 volts. Now during decompression, as the piezoelectric device returns to its original state, the current is going to reverse in direction. So current will flow here, and it's going to flow through D2. D2 will be on, but it's blocked by D3, so D3 is off. And then it's going to flow through the same direction, through C1. It really doesn't flow through C1, but it charges C1 in that direction. And then it's going to flow through D4. D4 is going to be on. D3, there'll be no point going through D3 because if it did, it will be returning back to the positive terminal, which it doesn't want to do. So the current's going to flow through diode 4 and then towards the negative terminal. So in both cases, the capacitor is being charged, whether the piezoelectric device is being compressed or decompressed. And so we can capture more energy with this particular circuit. Now let's talk about how the piezoelectric device can generate an electrical current. Most piezoelectric devices are made up of the quartz crystal, which is composed of silicon dioxide. It contains silicon and oxygen atoms. Now there are other types of piezoelectric materials. It's not limited to quartz, but quartz is one of the most common examples. And here's how it works. When you compress the quartz crystal, you change the shape. The dipole moments within the crystal no longer cancel out. We no longer have a electrically neutral crystal. So let me draw a representation of the new change structure. So let's say we compress it to the point where it looks something like this. Now the actual crystal is more complex than uh, these six atoms, but this is just a way to visualize it. Notice that the top part now has a net negative charge because we have more oxygen atoms at the top. The bottom part is more positive because we have two silicon atoms at the bottom, one oxygen atom. So by compressing the crystal, we change the position of the atoms to the point where one side is negatively charged and the other side is positively charged. And in this way, conventional current will flow from the positive side to the negative side. But keep in mind, in actuality, electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. And so that's how 
the piezo electric device can convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. When the shape is deformed, it creates a charge imbalance where one side is positive and the other side is negative. And so current will flow from one side of the crystal to the other side. And so that's it for this video. So now you understand how piezoelectric devices work and how they can convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. Thanks for watching.